He was just at about this point of the draft. Suffered a horrific injury in Honolulu in a game. Joe, you were up front and center coaching. Uh, four knee ligaments torn and injured nerve damage and really was yeah. was life-threatening in, in a bizarre beach uh, flag football game. Right. First of all, uh, we wish Robert the best and, and understand that things are coming along given the situation as well as they could. It's not a question of will he play football again right now, right now certainly. It's a question of will he be able to just lead a normal life and walk, and we certainly wish our best to Robert Edwards. Now on to football. They thought they had the running back question with Curtis Martin gone, Edwards a thousand yard back solved. They do not. So, the New England Patriots with their second first round pick, do they go with the back like Kevin Falk? LSU, let's go up to New England and join Solomon Wilcox. Solomon. Thanks, Chris. There are a number of different running backs in this draft, but most feel that only Ricky Williams and Edron James are really deserving of a first round pick. I talked with the Patriots general manager just yesterday, and he told me that he said, hey, we believe there are some good running backs in this draft, but we want to add some speed to our defense. If you go inside the war room prior to this next selection, Pete Carroll was making a strong case for trying to get a defensive player. I'm told it's going to be Andy Katzenmoyer with the 28th pick. Bobby Greer, the general manager, he said he wanted to get some speed on the defensive side of the ball. So look for them to select Andy Katzenmoyer, the linebacker from Ohio State, Chris. Well, thank you, Solomon. And that, now, if that is the move, it's a very interesting move for New England, Bill. Well, it is. I think linebacker was a position you'd always use in Andy Katzenmoyer, but you would think running back with Kevin Falk or Rob Conrad or Patrick Kearney to add into the mix at defensive end. But I think when you look at value at this point, Andy Katzenmoyer was projected to be a mid-first rounder, did not have a big-time season in 98. Remember, this was his junior year. Phenomenal freshman season with those 23 tackles for loss, 13 sacks. But he tailed off as a sophomore, then not as productive this past season. When you look at the big cat, look at the productivity in 96 compared to 97 and 98, sophomore and junior year. The drop-off, very dramatic. And I think that's the fear factor now with Katzenmoyer. Will he revert back to that form, or will this decline continue? I think when you look at Andy Katzenmoyer at this stage of the first round, he's certainly worth the risk if there is any at this point. Well, part of the reason that if this is the move, Mel and Joe, is that, you know, Todd Collins, a solid linebacker, not the, the great player that Ted Johnson is, sure. who they've signed long-term. But he went on to St. Louis. They lost him. So there is, it's a somewhat of a need position. It is, Chris, but I think Bruschi can play outside. Mm -hmm. I think he moves outside for you. I talked to one of the defensive coaches in National Football League. He said he's never seen a linebacker be able to take the punishment that Katzenmoyer has. He doesn't get engulfed by these big, huge offensive tackles. You talk about guys 360, 370, 380. He's big enough at two, almost 260 to be able to stand there, withstand the punishment, and take on blockers. I think which one of the things Mel mentioned, he may have gotten bored at Ohio State after his first year. He moved around in position. He wasn't real happy. I think that's all that all that has the, an opportunity to be behind him. Now he has to get interested again. Certainly, if this doesn't get him interested, having a chance to go there, then there isn't going to be an interest at all. Katzen Moore is an intriguing player, and of course, he, you know, he's the Chris Spielman type, and they, they kind of have competed to weight room, etc. Mike Ditka reportedly was interviewing Katz and Moyer a month or two ago as perhaps someone that the Saints might draft. And he said, Andy, you know, what is your favorite linebacker? Is there a guy that you look up to playing in junior high and high school and maybe college ball? He said, well, my favorite line figure, he might be Dick Butkus or maybe Mike Singletary or Nitschke or somebody, uh, Jack Lambert. The answer was Brian Bosworth. And Ditka kind of went back in his chair supposedly and said, well, why? So I like the way he came out of the tunnel. <laughs> Andy Katzenmoyer is not a New Orleans Saint. I don't know if that's the only reason. And it's an intriguing story. Does he come out of the tunnel like Bosworth? I tell you, he's the big cat. I think, you know, he had that ability as a, as a freshman. He was talked about as eventually being a top five pick in the first round. And you look at the big cat, you see the size and phenomenal speed and strength. Uh, the physical computer numbers of Andy Katzenmoyer are that of a high first round draft choice. The big cat. Look at the eyes of a middle linebacker. Katzenmoyer, watch this vicious hit against Corby Jones. That's as a, as a sophomore back in 1997. Here. Another uh, opportunity to make a big hit, get to the flanks, and he has 4-4-9 speed. Here he gets cut. Locker awareness, somewhat questionable for Katz and Moyer. Spend some time on the ground. Here, though, again, the speed to the outside. This kid can run in space and make plays. Again, on the tackle at the sideline. I think you see ability, sideline to sideline type speed for Katz and Moyer. Certainly the strength 
and the ability physically to take on those big centers and guards. He just has to learn to get off a block and stay out of traffic. Well, let's go up to the traffic and the podium and the commissioner for the Patriots pick. Uh, with the 28th pick, the New England Patriots select Andy Katzenmoyer, linebacker, Ohio State. Certainly one of the most heralded college players over the last few years. So now the Patriots have one of the Katzenmoyer kids. Tom Jackson, you're old enough to remember the Katzenmoyer kids. He's a guy that you have watched play, I am sure, living in uh, Ohio as you do. He's just a hard-nosed sideline-to-sideline player. You love him, Tom? Well, I think he has tremendous lateral pursuit, and, and you love the attitude that he eats, sleeps, and breathes football. Uh, but what, would you, what you saw in the highlight package is a player who runs from point A to point B, and that is great. He runs that 4-4-9, but at times he wasn't able to protect his legs, and so he couldn't get to places and make plays on the football field. So I think there is some technique work that he's going to have to go through. But uh, yes, he has the potential to be a good player, but I think that in the pros, there's nothing that takes the place of making plays, and I think that's why he wasn't a top-five choice this year, and that's why he fell a little bit in the draft. Back to New York. All right, Tommy, thank you. Uh, let's go up uh, to Bristol now uh, to Mark Malone and Ron Jaworski as the Patriots have gone one offense, now one defense with their two first-round pick. Guys? Well, Boomer, I think Tommy Jackson's remarks are right on the button. Uh, Joe mentioned the fact that he's a guy that, that 258 pounds can take on offensive tackles just fine, but what happens when he's got to take on one of the big fullbacks in that division? And if you have problems with people getting at your legs, that could be a problem in the ISO Bob, Jaws. Yeah, clearly, Mark, when uh, we, you know when Tommy talked about going lateral point A to point B, it's real obvious that Katzenmoyer has that ability, but he's going to have to take people on in the hole, in the gauntlet at the line of scrimmage with the ISO Bob. This is what Andy Katzenmoyer is going to face, the Sam Gash, the Howard Griffiths, you know, the Moose Johnsons, and here's basically what will happen. There will be a double team from the guard in the center coming down on that tackle and just trying to blow him out of there and create a gap. You will see this tackle take on defensive end because he has an angle. The tight end will see Seal off this linebacker. Now, here's where the ISO Bob comes. The back, the fullback on the backer, the linebacker, in this case, Andy Katzenmoyer. The quarterback will turn and give the ball to the running back, hitting up into this hole. Here's where the collision takes place, right there, right there on the big X. And there are talk about uh, Andy Katzenmoyer maybe not being able to take people on, they can get to his legs. If in this hole where he is, t that collision takes place, if he can't take people on, he cannot play in the National Football League. And I will say this, in a 4-3 defense, the tempo setter of the defense is the middle linebacker. If Andy Katzenmoyer does doesn't have the passion to attack the fullback in the hole, he will never play, Mark. Josh, you've got to have passion for the game if you're playing middle linebacker. Traditionally, that has been the leader on the defensive side of the football. The Minnesota Vikings are now on the clock. Of course, they selected Dante Culpepper earlier in the first round. Andrea Kramer is standing by. Andrea? Hi, Mark. I think the Vikings now might turn to defense. I think the discussion in the Minnesota Vikings war room is about the best player still available that fits a need, and that could be defensive end Demetrius Underwood from Michigan State. Remember, they're not going to re-sign Derek Alexander. They want to move John Randall inside to his best position, which is under tackle. Uh, Demetrius Underwood did not play his senior year at Michigan State. He had a severe high ankle sprain. Danny Green thinks he's past that. What, they, what uh, Underwood would do is compete with the newly acquired John Burroughs as well as Dwayne Clemens. He's what Denny calls a big base end. He's explosive coming off the ball. As I said, he's the highest rated player that they have at a need position, and I think the Vikings are considering Demetrius Underwood. Mark, let's head back to you. Hi, Andrea, that would certainly make sense. They need somebody out there to take some pressure off of John Randall. He the one who gets most of the double teams on that Minnesota front seven. Well, our continuing coverage here of the draft will be back around here in just a short minute as the Minnesota Vikings are on the clock. Plug into savings on your new Direct TV system today at Circuit City. You'll get free professional installation when you buy a Direct TV system. And get three free months of Direct TV's Total Choice programming when you subscribe to Total Choice, a value of over $85. Plus, get one free month of movies from USSB, a $32.99 value, a combined value of over $300 in free services. Get more movies, more sports, and more value from your TV with Direct TV at Circuit City. Hook me up. Got a date. I'm gonna call. 
Got change. Change? Dial 1-800-C-A-L-L-A-T-T and call her collect. You pay one low rate all the time. That's called the half bro. 1-800-CALL-A-T-T. The guaranteed cheap way to call collect.